In this video, I'm going to show an example of analyzing uh, a CSV file of acceleration data. Uh, so you go to Google Colab, which uh, is a free way to run Python code. It's, it's pretty cool, and it's uh, all hosted in the cloud. You can run this locally as well. Uh, but to start, you need to import your libraries. So you just hit Run here. Uh, this is These are libraries of various packages and, and functions we use throughout this analysis. These are all built into Colab. Uh, if you want to use a library that doesn't exist as a built-in, you can do pip, uh, uh, exclamation point pip, space, install, and then the library name. We're using things already built in. So once we've imported some of these main libraries, we can also go to import the file itself, which you hit that choose files and then select the file you want to use. Uh, and it will take a moment as it imports. I will say that I'm assuming the CSV has column names and the first column I'm assuming is time in parentheses uh, S uh, for, for time in seconds. So make sure that that, that CSV you're going to use has column names and the first column being time uh, in seconds. So now it's imported and I can run this cell, which will just convert it into a data frame. And you see my column, my first column is time in seconds and then my second column is acceleration G. You can do any number of columns, uh, but, but at least make sure the first one is time in seconds. And here I uh, then define my time in seconds as the index which then allows me to uh, filter into that file pretty easily. So once I have it imported as a data frame, I can do something very simple as df.plot, and that generates this plot. I can also, because I had indexed my time, I can select a range very easily by just doing these brackets. And so I'm gonna plot just from time 22 to 24 seconds. Now these plots are good. This is built into pandas. It's using a library called matplotlib. But Plotly is way better. Um, so here's a function that, given a data frame, will will generate a Plotly figure. So here I'm I'm going to generate this Plotly figure. I'm also going to save it to uh, to an HTML file so I can share it with somebody. And now in here I can zoom around uh, and you know you see all this uh, interactivity with the file. And again, this is saved as an HTML, so I don't even have to be logged in to to Colab or, or anything to uh, access this data. You just have to look at it in a web browser. Again, you can index by uh, just the brackets and the time range you want, and then this will just plot um, just in that time range from 22 to 24 seconds in this example. Now let's generate a power spectral density. We're doing that using uh, the signal.welch function. So we'll run that cell and then actually calculate the power spectral density. The inputs are the data frame, as well as the bin width in uh, hertz that we want. And you see we have a PSD now with every one hertz, there's a new value. And now let's plot this. And here you go. So here's our power spectral density. Uh, looks great, again, it's interactive, all this good stuff. We can, I can show you how you, you change, uh, change these, you know, uh, bin widths, maybe I want to do 10 hertz instead of one hertz, or I want to do, uh, you know, half a hertz to get a little more granular. That's very simple with just passing in that bin width argument. I also may want to save these again to HTML for that interactive plot or a uh, CSV file, which you can do just by doing psd.csv and then calling it whatever name you want. Now let's also generate a cumulative RMS from the power spectral density, which is very easy to do. Uh, and now you see here that, that cumulative RMS. And again, I save that to a CSV file as well as an HTML. Another thing you may want to do is uh, generate an octave spaced power spectral density. So here I have, uh, I had to declare a couple functions to do this. I won't go through that now, but you can hide that. And then once that's declared, once you've run that, you can generate this uh, octave space PSD. Here I'm passing in, you know, the, the octaves I want, which is one third, starting at one hertz and going up to half the sample rate. And there you go. And now I can redo this example uh, <clears throat> now with some other data. Instead of importing it like I just did, I can instead uh, read it from a known locations, here's an example file. 
So this is X, Y, and Z axis acceleration. Again, set the index to be the time, the first column. You can plot it here. We'll do the interactive plot. Um, there you go. Take a moment because it's a lot of data to plot. But here it is. Uh, you can index it again by, by specifying the time range. Now let's calculate that power spectral density off of it. Again, it has multiple columns, so it can handle that no problem. Here's the power spectral density off that data. Um, again, you can change the bin width if you like or um, make a cumulative RMS calculation. There'll be multiple lines for the, the three different columns that I had. And once you have that, you can also filter to see one column, just isolating it or clicking it in the legend, which is cool. So now you notice I've saved a couple of things to CSV and HTML. So on the left-hand side, this is my table of contents of, of the CoLab uh, notebook, but here is also these files that I have saved so I can download them uh, just by clicking that. And that's a quick example about using Python to analyze acceleration data. We will have some more uh, videos and blog content uh, on this uh, in, the, in the months ahead. Thanks.